parked in this weird space and then, you know, he turned the truck off and he came back. I was sitting on the bump bed, which is in the back of the truck. And he looked at me with this weird, funny face. And you know what he told me? Do you really want to know what he told me? He'd say, you know this what? This is majestic. I hope you don't have a problem, but... I like to eat people. I said, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Hey guys, welcome back to Motivation and Box Trucking. Did y'all know that truckers have a bad rep when it comes to relationships? One survey showed that 90% of truckers found it challenging to form and sustain relationships due to the profession. As a trucker, you know, if your wheels aren't turning, you aren't making money. But that schedule, being over the road for days or weeks, could be strenuous on a relationship. Being an owner operator with my husband has given me an insight that you can only appreciate if you're in the industry with them. Some women say that they would never date a trucker. Most cited infidelity and schedule conflicts as major reasons. And this next clip shows a young lady on a dating show who shares why she can't get down with the trucker. I'll be honest, I've never heard this reason before, though. Tony, I'm 28, and I'm in transportation. I drive trucks. OK, let's start over here. Why do we end up hopping Tony's? Um, that was kind of boring. It wasn't nothing like more. Wait, just what like, was boring? I just drive trucks. I mean, you asked what I do. That's what I do. Boring. Yeah, no, nothing against it. I definitely. Appreciate it, but like for me, I'm. It's not for me. I it's get like a you young, so like, I, I, I am young. I am young, and it's kind of like boring. Mm. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm here now, but I'm still gonna grow. Absolutely. And that's just. It's not no, your just speed. just it's hearing okay. that, just hearing that from with nothing else, no mm. context, nothing else to it. It's just. And what type um, of context you look for when you ask? <laughs> he said, so he driver. said what he's into now, and then he also went like, okay, but I have these goals and aspirations. But that's not what you ask. You ask, what do you do for work? Yeah, he, that's what and you do. And I told do. you what I do for work. What they do currently is okay because they're bosses. I like a. You serious? Not so a you, boss. You, like you, I like you, to, a somebody digger, who calls the shots. You're a no, gold digger. I like somebody who can lead me because I call shots. I need somebody who can call my shots as well. Stop the cap. <laughs> not saying that you can't mm -hmm. just like off the response you gave it wasn't like you can handle me okay mm -hmm. i know me so do me a favor please get out of here the crazy thing is this young man probably makes way more money than any of those quote-unquote entrepreneurs on the panel but i think he dodged the bullet did you know that two out of three truckers have ended a relationship due to strains caused by their profession? You call it his wife or girlfriend or whatever. I miss you. I miss you. I want you home. I want to be home too, boo. I'm just saying, I can't do this. Now you got to try to calm her down when you're trying to do your thing here. And the next day, she okay. The next day, she's not. Now you're taking all that with you. All right. So what are you doing? Let me ask you a question. When the fuck are you coming home? I ask you, you say I don't know. One year, this year, that year, what the fuck? Yeah. Fucking know. You gotta fucking know. Everybody knows. I need to fucking know. How the fuck I'm Tina? How the fuck I'm Tina? I was already out the fucking country, babe. You sound stupid as hell, man. You sound... Okay, okay, so you to blame for these. You, I'm blaming you. I'm gonna blame you then. You keep on blaming me! I'm not even blaming you that much! Okay, what the fuck was you expecting on the motherfucking level then? I'm not gonna keep on fucking with you like that. 46% of truckers with kids say they always or often miss important events due to being on the road. Yeah, the money comes rolling in, but that comes at a big cost. It takes a lot of, takes a lot of patience, man. You know, especially being, you gotta be forthcoming. Like, the one thing I'm, I'm forthcoming, I always make a joke when I say, like, dating me is like dating your period. I'm only around once a month. Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? Now, this next video is just crazy. 
how true it is, I'm not sure, but if you check that out, Serial Killer Truckers video, it's not too far-fetched. The loner personality that some truckers have can be socially awkward or even scary sometimes. Be careful out here, especially when meeting singles on these dating apps or just picking up some company in the lot. As this little story goes on, I think it was going into three months. We decided to link up. I mean, he was serious this time because he was like, oh, you need to meet me. Uh, meet me at the truck stop because he was a driver, you know. Meet me at the truck stop. Okay, so I met him at a truck stop in Atlanta. And let me tell you guys, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Everything was nice. And then we got the moving the truck. And that's where it really, really went down, you know. It was so, I mean, the vibe was good. Everything was good. And then this guy took me up in the mountains in the dark when nobody was around. Make the long story short, what I was saying earlier, so he took me in the mountains. I mean, we had a good day. We went out to eat. I mean, that's all I remember. We, we parked in this weird space, and then, you know, he turned the truck off, and he came back. I was sitting on the bump bed. I don't like where this is going. And he looked at me with this weird, funny face. And you know what he told me? Do you really want to know what he told me? He said, you know this what? This is majestic. I hope you don't have a problem, but I like to eat people. I'm looking for Ann Burrell, Paula D, or Bobby Flay. Because I'm thinking they put me in the oven for 450 degrees until plump and golden brown. Now, just imagine you in the middle of the boom fucks and you don't know where you at. And this guy that's almost 6, 7, 200 pounds is telling you that he likes to eat people. And you see how little I am. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just looking at him like, okay. <laughs> First thing came to my mind was, okay, well maybe you can teach me how to eat people. And we both can learn how to eat people because I'm just thinking about my safety right now. I'm done. Cut the show. 38% of people said lack of trust was a major challenge for their relationship when dating a trucker. When we first got together, I was a little ditzy about it because I was busy. I was, I've always been really focused on my own stuff. So he, I was in college, so I was first focused on graduating. When I graduated from college, I had a job. I always had a full-time job, at least one or two types of employment or something like that. So mm -hmm. I think part of what why I wasn't so concerned with him being over the road is because I was kind of into myself anyway. Mm -hmm. So we had a relationship, but it wasn't like the center of my everything. Oh, okay. So, um, we've had our issues in the past, but honestly, I think why we were able to get through so much is because I was really, I wasn't all, you know, some people in their relationship would be all wrapped up in the relationship and that's it. Like, yeah. on, oh, what am I going to do every week? I have friends. I was out. I was working, so between working and hanging out with my friends and being able to talk to him on the phone, I never did anything to kind of slow down what he was doing because my mind just wasn't focused on that. You know what I mean? Right, right. So basically you're saying that you was into yourself. So you was, you know, you had hobbies, you were out doing you. FaceTiming and video calls are the top way truckers have kept the romance alive while on the road. One suggestion is to take your partner with you on the road to let them see what it's like. To see the country on, you know, like a little mini vacation. You know, when you out here over the road 24 seven, seven days a week, it can get real taxing on you physically and mentally. So you need to take some time for yourself. I lucked out and got a beast and load going to Phoenix, Arizona. I decided to take a couple days off and plan for my wife's birthday. Parked the truck at a company terminal in Phoenix, got a rental car, and now we was on our way to an Airbnb. Sometimes you gotta take a moment to enjoy life. We got to the Airbnb. It was already decorated. Shout out to the host for my wife's birthday with several party favors. And the home was amazing. It was just a nice time to get away from the truck, get away from that highways and just unwind a little bit. The 
best thing about this over the road lifestyle is the fact that we can do something like this. Go to a random city and take some time off to experience what this city has to offer. Let me know if y'all think the trucker curse is real. It can be lonely out here in these streets, but until next time, stay safe and stay motivated.